This is your High Desert Sports Report. The Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program. Covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. Apple Valley takes a 20 to nothing first half lead over Adelanto and fights off the Saints' second half surge, holding on for a 26 to seven victory in this battle between top 10 ranked teams. Apple Valley forces four turnovers. Jacob Soria registers two interceptions and says he felt going in that the Sun Devils defense was going to have to make the difference. Yeah, I definitely knew that because they had they had some pretty good um, athletes at receiver and, and they had that um, Buchanan at running back. But I knew our defense was going to shut them down and do work. Uh, definitely, I think we played a big role. I think um, we had four turnovers this game. It really played, played a big part in our game. The Atalanto High School PA announcer dramatizes the matchup as classic good versus evil. Saints against Devils. Coach Gali Wadud's Saints take the field 3-1, and one, ranked 5th in CIF Division 12, 3rd in Max Preps poll. Coach Matt Rohrbaugh's undefeated Sun Devils gunning for win number 5, the number 6 team in CIF's Division 6 poll, 10th in the Max Prep rankings. Atalanta wins the toss and defers to the second half, kicking off to start the game. Brandon Jones, too, delivering the first big hit of the game, and Apple Valley begins at the 17. Cornerback Jermaine Scrutchens, 25, blitzes and runs down the ball carrier. Omari McCulley, 9, in on the stop, dropping the Sun Devils for a loss. But Atalanta is flagged for their first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and Apple Valley is out to the 32. Kenyard to Edwards Jr. cuts off Ryan Webster and Isaac Pimental blocks three yards before linebacker Ricky Lee Medina, eight, and free safety Lawrence Oliver, three, make the stop. Hosiah Stokes, one, first to make contact, then Lawrence Oliver, three, four yard gain for Isaac Pimental, 5'8", 180 pound junior running back. Third and three at the 39, right guard Colin Mayo, 72, leading blockers for Kenyard Edwards Jr., who picks up four and a first down before brought down by Ricky Lee Medina and Josiah Stokes. After an encroachment penalty makes it first and five at the 47, Isaac Pimental for six, crossing midfield to the Saints, 47. Sun Devils opening drive will consist of 11 straight running plays. The game plan obvious, power ball grinded out, keeping the ball on the ground. Kenyard Edwards Jr. skips past one defender and carries for 22 yards to the 25. Kenyard Edwards Jr. on his way to a fifth straight 100 yards plus game. Play seven of the drive, Kenyard Edwards Jr. for eight to the 14. Watch for freshman defensive tackle Darren Hughes, 99, at the bottom of this swarm of Saints tacklers on this play. 42 is Darius Gibson, 90 L.J. Fowle, 29 Robert Ramsey. Seven at the six. You'll see this pattern repeatedly, continuously this game. Closer Apple Valley gets to the end zone, the stiffer the Saints defense gets. Returning all CIF defensive back, Josiah Stokes, again leading tacklers. Then Robert Ramsey with the tackle for a loss, pushing the Sun Devils back to the nine. Among the glaring mistakes, Apple Valley coaches seek to eradicate, eliminate the plague of holding penalties that have hampered so many Sun Devils' sustained drives. Jeremy Justice II's end-around touchdown is not only nullified, the holding penalty effectively puts the skids on the drive. It precedes Apple Valley's first pass attempt, which misfires, and the Saints take over on downs. Angel Ochoa to Marshawn Buchanan on the Saints' first play of the game, but on the next play, an illegal procedure penalty backs Atalanto up, and it is second and 14 at the 16. Angel Ochoa to Rashawn Ramsey to the 30. First down, Rashawn Ramsey, 5'10", Jr., the Saints' leading receiver on the year. Saints' first running play, Rashawn Ramsey, gain of one, 47, Jacob Soria, the tackler, 57 is James Reed. 
first Apple Valley takeaway about to take place. 20 is Dominique Solis, who intercepts at midfield and returns it to the red zone. Although a penalty for an illegal block on the run back moves the Sun Devils back to midfield. Dominique Solis is a 6'2", 180-pound junior. An exchange of penalties, Apple Valley delay of game, then late hit against the Saints, bring up first down at the 32, Jaden Max Denegal to Marquise Cato. And the Saints are flagged for roughing the passer, moving the Sun Devils to the 21. Four plays later, first and goal at the nine, J. Max Denegal hits Tyron Smith for the game's first touchdown. Sixth TD reception for the 6'1", 180-pound All-MRL wide receiver, Ty Smith is a junior. 14th scoring pass for the sophomore quarterback, J. Max Denegal. Seven to nothing, Apple Valley, 19 seconds remain in quarter number one. The Saints set up at their 37 following Brandon Jones' kickoff return. We turn to second quarter action. This is second and 15 from the 35. The second Sun Devils takeaway. Sam Jang, 11 with the hit, jarring the ball loose. Jacob Soria comes up with it. Sam Jang is the Sun Devils leading tackler on the year. He is a returning first team all MRL linebacker. From the 39, Joquan Banks, 22, leading Saints, making the stop. Joquan Banks, Atalanto's leading tackler on the season, coming in. A couple of plays later, big gain by Kenyard Edwards Jr. from the 29 to the 17. Gain of 12, Kenyard Edwards Jr. is a 5'9", 175-pound senior. Watch for Saints linebacker Ricky Lee Medina, 8, as a handful of Atalanto defenders put the brakes on this play, Ricky Lee Medina, six foot, 210 pound junior, two, Brandon Jones, a junior, three, senior free safety, Lawrence Oliver. Third and five at the 12. This path of greater resistance is led by Josiah Stokes, one, and Darius Gibson, 42. Atalanto has confronted the Sun Devils with a fourth and four at the 11. Will it be inside, outside, or a pass play? 72, 6'2", 280, Colin Mayo pulls. Kenyard Edwards Jr. takes a step toward the middle, then breaks outside wide and untouched into the end zone. 12th touchdown on the year for Kenyard Edwards Jr. as Apple Valley capitalizes on their second takeaway for their second TD of the night. A pass interception preceded their first score, the fumble recovery, the second. Sean Owens' kick is good, 8-21 in the second quarter, 14 to nothing Sun Devils. Brandon Jones' excellent kickoff return to the 31 until corralled by Sam Jang and 21 Gabriel Carrasco. Big first down carry by Marshawn Buchanan begins this possession from the 31 to midfield. But then the disappointment and frustration on the part of the premier running back when the play is called back due to yet another penalty. Holding penalty this time again. Marshawn Buchanan comes in averaging eight and a half yards per carry having rushed for 119 yards the week prior in Atalanto's victory over Sultana. This is second and 16 at the 24. The Sam Jang and Dominic Solis sandwich creates another fumble, but Rashawn Ramsey is there to fall on it and avoid further disaster. From the 34, Rashawn Ramsey hauls it in and carries for a first down. 53 downfield is Kevin Hoskins, 6'4", 280 pound senior. A first down procedure penalty backs the Saints up to their 36. Marshawn Buchanan carries for five, high stepping through one tackler before Tyron Smith and company bring him down. Third and long from their 40. Rashawn Ramsey takes the snap but cannot escape Sam Jang who lassos him and throws him down. The Saints have to punt it away. Apple Valley's possession begins at their own 42. We skip ahead to fourth and five, 29 yards farther upfield at Atalanto's 29. J. Max Denigo heads downfield. The double reverse gets the ball to Ethan Peratt, who 
Well, let's let Ethan Peratt describe what uh, happens. We've been working it up all uh, at practice every day. Uh, Jaden wasn't there, and I had uh, Kato in the corner, so I just scrambled and saw Kato, and I threw it to him. Made the catch. Good play. Big play. Congratulations. Good going. Thank Keep you, sir. Going. Thank you, sir. Marquise Cato, 5'9", 160-pound junior, big playmaker. The touchdown, the last scoring by the Sun Devils until the final minute of the second half, coming with one minute to go before halftime. Standout defensive plays the first half include this quarterback sack by the blitzing strong safety Jeremy Justice II. The 6'3", 190 pound senior came into this game with nine solo tackles and a total of 30 tackles on the year. Second on the team behind Sam Jang's 49. Saints coach Gali Wadud, last year's CIF Division 13 Coach of the Year, not at all pleased with his team's efforts the first half, and his halftime encouragement in the locker room had the desired effects. Atalanto comes out the second half inspired, motivated, and moving the ball effectively. The Saints scoring on their first possession of the third quarter and their defense shuts out the Sun Devils until the final minute of play in the fourth quarter. Key plays in the scoring drive, Angel Ochoa scrambles and hits Rashawn Ramsey for a first down on a third and short deep in their own territory. Marshawn Buchanan picks up eight, good for a first down, across midfield into Apple Valley territory. The touchdown comes on this, first down play at the 31. Angel Ochoa to Rashawn Ramsey, who takes it at the 15, cuts to the middle, evades a tackler, and carries into the end zone. Sixth TD reception on the year for Rashawn Ramsey, 12th scoring pass for Angel Ochoa, the senior signal caller. Gabriel Perez sends the extra point through the uprights. It is 20 to 7. Atalanto consuming the first four and a half minutes of the third quarter on the scoring drive. How fired up are Saints defenders? Apple Valley's first play following the kickoff. 42, Darius Gibson first to the ball. Darius Gibson, 6'2", 183, senior defensive end. 8 is Ricky Lee Medina. 21, middle linebacker Joseph Tenna, 6'2", junior. 50 is junior defensive tackle Steve Wilson. He is 6'2", 300 pounds. Atalanto forces the Sun Devils three and out. Rashawn Ramsey fields the punt at full throttle at his own 40, sails down the Saints' sidelines into the red zone, finally driven out inside the five. Brilliant return by Rashawn Ramsey, further fueling Atalanto's fever pitch, escalating shift in momentum. The Saints' propensity for penalties raises its ugly head. A procedure call moves them back to the 10. From there, Mashawn Buchanan carries inside the five, but an unsportsmanlike conduct call erases the gain and backs Atlanto back to the 20. Second and goal from the 20, Omari McCulley grabs the pitch and carries to the 13 before incomplete passes on third and fourth down turn the ball back over to the Sun Devils. No drop-off in defensive intensity on the Saints' behalf. Joquan Banks leads the swarm of tacklers, dropping the ball carrier after a short gain. Ricky Lee Medina enforcing first rules of engagement, forcing the Sun Devils into a third and five, but an encroachment penalty on the defense gives the Sun Devils a first down, keeping the drive intact. Jaden Max Denigal goes to the air and connects with Brandon Pedroza, moving Apple Valley across the 30. The final play of the third quarter, Kenyard Edwards Jr. gets outside and out to midfield. Apple Valley will begin committing the penalties that have hampered their efforts to sustain a drive, though. First a face mask infraction, then an illegal procedure call, and then another exchange of penalties early in the fourth quarter that has Apple Valley setting up with third and long in their own territory. The Saints do not get the ball on the fumble, but they have forced Apple Valley to punt, and we go to the Saints 
Bulls. First possession of the fourth quarter. We're already approaching the midway mark in the fourth quarter. The Saints are called for holding on their first play. We go to second and eight at their 12. Jacob Soria sees the pass coming his way. He jumps the route, picks it off, carries across field to where he is driven out of bounds at the 10 yard marker. The Saints had been their own worst enemy on this possession, beginning with the first down holding call that placed them in a long yardage situation. Then this pass interception, their third turnover of the night. Both coaching staffs want to see fewer penalties committed by their team in games ahead. This Apple Valley possession is backed up by a major penalty, bringing up this first down at the 17, Joseph Tenna with the tackle for no gain. For the Saints to stage a late game rally, a defensive stop is crucial. Darius Gibson, the hard hit, stopping the second down play for a loss. Third and five at the 13. Jaden Max Denigo to 13. Tyron Smith bringing up a fourth and short. Omari McCullough penetrates. The Saints hold and turn the ball back over to the offense with two minutes yet to play. Atalanto, a touchdown, onside kick recovery, and score away from the win. Jalen Yancey in at quarterback to Marshawn Buchanan who gets outside and then out of bounds to stop the clock. First down Saints at the 22. An Apple Valley encroachment penalty gives the Saints first and five at the 27. Ryan Webster and Gavin Hembrick apply the pass rush. Jacob Soria the diving interception and the Saints hopes of upsetting the Sun Devils dies in the process. For the six foot 190 pound junior two interceptions and a fumble recovery. I was already happy with one interception, but then I saw the ball thrown my way again. I knew I had to hop on another opportunity. It felt amazing. Down Home Grill invites Jacob Soria to come in and enjoy a free meal. On Apple Valley's first play following the interception, Kenyard Edwards Jr. races 31 yards for the icing on the cake touchdown, coming with one minute to go in the game. One way the Saints may look at it, if high school football games were 11 minute quarters instead of 12, this game would have ended in regulation play tied at seven. As it turns out, the final is Apple Valley 26, Atalanto seven. Apple Valley scores three touchdowns the first quarter, three more in the second quarter on their way to a 41 to nothing halftime lead and 48 to nothing victory over Burroughs. Kenyard Edwards Jr. scores twice. This four yard blast opens the scoring. Jaden Max Denigal throws six TD passes to four different receivers, the longest this 50 yarder to Kenyard Edwards Jr. Ethan Perrant, the recipient of a pair of J. Max Denigal TD passes. This, a 10-yard strike. Tight end Ryan Webster on this 13-yard touchdown. Tyron Smith hauls in this 4th and 11 offering and tight ropes his way into the end zone for J. Max Denigal's 18th touchdown pass of the year. A second half, Denigal to Smith TD pass ends the scoring, running the sophomore QB's TD passes total to 19. These Sun Devils scoring plays hot off the down home grill, defensive plays of the game, and more action highlights straight ahead on the next Video Sports Online report. Stay tuned. Down Home Grill Online Sports Report. Action highlights brought to you by Down Home Grill. Burgers from organic grass-fed beef. Breakfast from organic eggs. Great food. Homemade, GMO, and many gluten-free. Down Home Grill, located at the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive in Victorville. 12,500 responded to the High Desert Quality of Life survey. Here are segments from Joseph W. Brady interviews as the High Desert Quality of Life survey results are are processed. There are a lot of people that want to see a change up here, but we don't want to change it tomorrow. It's really a dialogue. So, so with the help of John O'Haney and the master plan developer of Tapestry, uh, with Randy Terrell with Pat Santino Anderson, the help of Katrina Sieverts, Bo 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 Grillet with with Sheer Graham Carr with NAI Capital. Um, I'm just looking around the room. Um, uh, we believe that now's the time to reintroduce the name Wahabi River Valley out there. 
We've had serious conversations with the city of Hesperia. We hope to, to see a, a city council resolution in the near future that would say, you know, all we are is, is supporting the name. We're not asking anybody to change their views. Uh, we've had uh, serious meetings with the city of Atlanta, with, with the mayor and the city, with the, with, with the mayor and Stefania Evans. The, um, she was mayor for 10 of the time. Uh, there's been meetings with uh, John has John O'Hanian has met and and Randy with Orlando Acevedo and I believe Doug Robertson at Town of Alpha Valley and and I think most of the uh, some most of the council members not all of them I think are supportive they, they came to a, uh, a meet and greet that we had about four months ago um, City Victor we were saying a great conversation with with Keith Metzer and with Sophie Smith and then we know that there's a, that there's a reluctancy there I mean Victor is the really the oldest city the Victorville's not the oldest city. Barstow's the oldest city. But, you know, Victorville's looked at, you know, in a very powerful way. Um, we just had a great meeting with, uh, with Nikki Salas out at the uh, city of, of Barstow with, with John and Randy and hope to make a presentation to their council soon. Uh, hopefully we'll make a presentation to the town of Apple Valley. So it's something that's going to move along, but is it something I think uh, needs to be done? Yes. <clears throat> is it one of those issues that we can agree respectfully with civility to say, okay, you like the words Victor Valley. That's great. I like the words Victor Valley too. I like the, you know, Mark Creffield and, and the, the Victor Chamber have a marketing um, uh, dialogue, not, not a marketing, but a slogan. I love the high desert. I love the high desert too. But there's three high deserts. You have the high desert in the Antelope Valley uh, that they call the Antelope Valley. You have the high desert here, which part of it is the Victor Valley. You have the high desert over Morongo. And you also remember that I, I, I was, was always big, and I was one of the founders of, of RITA, the High Desert Regional Economic Development Authority, that Barstow is one of our partners. And everything we do in our region includes Barstow. And there's, that, there's a, 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 a demarcation line at Hodge Road out there that, you know, you feel when you go north, you feel when you go south. There's people in Barstow that have had some challenges with issues here. They go way back. I mean, long, long time. I mean, I, every time I think of the rivalries, I think of the, you know, the, the rivalries between Terry Caldwell playing football in 1956, which happened to be the year I was born against Felix Diaz and Oral Grande in Victorville. So it, it's, it's, I, I think it's an exciting time. Terry, the one thing that I hope that everybody does is allows the dialogue to move forward for the Mojave River Valley. And hopefully the valley will come to a consensus. 40 years ago, I don't think there was a consensus to call Riverside and San Bernardino the Inland Empire. I don't think there was a consensus by anybody down in the Venice area to call that Silicon Beach. But as Eric Schmidt always reminds us, you know, he has two sons down there. The the young millennials and engineers said, you know, we're going to read, we're, we're going to take the Venice area and call it Silicon Beach. Look at Silicon Valley. So let's let's allow the dialogue. Let's have a good dialogue. You know, in, in, in the many early years I was here, we always had great dialogues, whether it be with the High Desert Construction Industries Association, and then it was called the, you know, the Victor Valley Association of Realtors. And, you know, there were always good dialogues, and there was there was some, you know, there, we, we, we kind of fought. We fought them amongst ourselves. You, know, you, you remember Valley Bucks? You know, we did Valley yeah. Bucks with Jim Busby and, you know, <laughs> I mean, and, and Mr. Williams from, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, Jack Jack Williams. So I, I, I think it, it's something that, that will hopefully grow. We are changing all of our letterhead to reflect, you know, that, that the Bradco companies is operating within the Mojave River Valley. And, and I hope that other people uh, support. I will, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. One of the questions on the, on the survey asks the question. I won't tell you what, what I've seen the answer at, but there, there, there is a resounding number of people that have a strong opinion about the name of the Mojave River Valley at this point. So I think it tells the group you know, what they need to look at in the future. What are some of the companies you've brought into the Mojave River Valley region, the Victor Valley? Well, you know, our, our, our staff, Terry, over a course of years, I and mean, we had some really good years and we've had some fairly slow years, uh, we believe that based on some old tracking numbers that we had, uh, that we've been responsible for about 10,000 jobs in the 31 years I've been here. Which, which I'm very pleased about. You know, it's not all about making a commission, okay? Um, a year ago, we started uh, taking a look for Apex models. Uh, Randy Briggs, uh, his, his sons Cody, um, uh, their, their partner Richard Briggs, to take a look at expanding in the city of Vectro. We found a couple sites, and the first thing that we did was we went over and talked to the city. You know, sat down with Scott Webb 
and said, Scott, you know, Scott is what I call the director of planning. He's not officially, they, they have another deal. But, you know, he, I mean, he works really close with him and Sophie Smith and, and Keith Metzler. And, and they really, I think, have attempted to change the tone of how they do business. And they become a lot more business friendly. Um, you know, I, I, I will email Scott and say, here's a site for a couple of clients. And what do you think? You know, we, we brought the, the lease family over to meet with the city sat down in the conference room and said, and here's a building. We had a great seller in Jeff Aguirre. The building was right there on Lorraine Drive and, 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 and Valley Center. Uh, building had been owned, I think, at one time by, by the city years ago. Um, but long story short, with the city's help, we were able to facilitate that deal. There were some improvements that had to be done. The tenant couldn't, uh, the, the buyer couldn't afford them right up front. So the city worked out a deal where they had a period of time. You know, the next one was, was a, a company called Shark Recycling. Uh, that, that Paul Casillo in our office worked with Don Brown with Lee and Associates. And they ended up taking a, a, a fairly substantial building that used to be the old storage building that the Whites had down on the west side, the east side of Asperia Road between Seneca and Mojave. It sits up there on top. It's about a five-acre site. And, and they do glass recycling. So they take windshields and things like that. And they worked on it for a long period of time. They went through the arduous process of the approvals with the city. And then there were some other things that, that happened. So they were able to come on in. And the last one that we recently did, I, I was personally really proud. You know, one of the big names up here in a quality family, you know, is the Coolies. I mean, you just can't think of a, of a name better than, than the Coolies. And, and, and um, it, we, we've had the, the opportunity of, of doing work with Don Cooley years ago when he owned Mojave Equipment. Unfortunately, his health has failed, and he's now living back in Colorado. And, but, he, but he had a 51-acre property. It's right next to Hollander Burger, right there on the side of the hill, and uh, worked very close with his wife, Terry. She's just, she was, she was incredible to work with. And, and Paul had a client, Paul Kazilinoff had, had a client that builds concrete panels for buildings. So, you know, we were able to strike a deal with Terry's help. I think where the challenge was, was that property was not only on the side of the hill, but, but it had a lot of dirt work. And I was able to convince her, although she wasn't probably happy about it, that's probably what, what challenges some people to hire us. I look at things more as a developer, and I say, okay, why don't we spend a little bit of money in order to get you that money? She did. Reluctantly, she did. She hired Joe, Joe Miller with J.E. Miller out there in uh, Apple Valley, knocked out of the park, did a great job. And, and, and in doing so, we were able to sit down with the tenant, with, with the buyer. So, so the buyer bought it, and then they've got a, they, they, they've got a relationship with, with the tenant to build these panels. But again, we brought in the city of Victorville. So we brought in Brian Gingler. We brought in Scott Webb and said, how do we do this? And, and we were at a point, at, at, at one point, where the road improvements out on D Street, just right next to Hollander Burger, were going to get so expensive the deal was going to die. So the city said, how can we do this without compromising safety? So again, you know, I'm not the biggest lover of government. I, I, I personally want less government. I mean, I'd love to see 50% less, you know, uh, federal, state, county, city government. But there's a point when you have a great government, you know, person in Scott Webb and, and Brian Gingler who sat down with the clients and, and the engineer. We brought in Robert Martinez. You know, we had Joe, we had uh, Joseph Miller. And we figured out how to make a deal. So now that that's the third company this year. So, you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves are, are actually not only talking the talk, but walking the walk and, and trying to promote the high desert region. We're working on a couple out, out in Barster right now, you know, or, you know, you know, refrigeration company. We're constantly working in Atlanta, and we've got a pretty nifty little development deal that we're working on. It's under contract with the city of of uh, Hesperia and, and uh, one of the major, major medical groups up here to do something that you'll see from the freeway, and I think that everybody would be happy. So well, there, 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 there's still some great things happening on up here. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. Bid fast and last world-class auctioneers, family-owned and operated liquidation experts. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. Valu Quality Truck Body, family owned and operated since 1954. Valu manufactures state-of-the-art truck bodies for the construction industry. Iwanzak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. 
and by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program, covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events.